good day. Uh, my name is Michael Molondo. I'm the presenter for the subject in community-based care and support, CB220S2. Um, we are going to discuss, going to look at HIV AIDS, um, then we're also going to look at uh, nutrition and how that's applicable to community-based care and support. Then we're going to look a little bit on palliative care, uh, especially people that are intensively uh, under the care of those that are doing community-based care. Then we are going to look at what symptoms uh, you can experience as a community home-based care caregiver and, uh, and how you can manage it, especially when you look after someone and that's on full-blown AIDS and, uh, and, and how you can manage those symptoms. Then uh, we're going to look at the aspect of adherence on ART, uh, antiretroviral drugs and, and treatment. And, and how it's very important for those that are on ARVs uh, must adhere to the drug. Then we are going to look uh, at uh, what does it mean when you are HIV positive. Uh, it does not mean that when you are HIV positive that it's the end of your life so you can live positively. Uh, and it's all about how you see yourself and, and, and how do you perceive your, your current status. And the important part is you have to love positively, in your mind, of course. And then we're going to look at uh, community mobilization and, and how you can co uh, mobilize communities and also how communities can then uh, participate in the home, in the community-based care and support. So when we look at HIV and nutrition, it's, it's very important that um, when you are uh, uh, on uh, HIV positive and you are on ARV, it's very important that you have to look at your nutrition. And nutrition of food is very, very much important. Uh, and it's not just for HIV, it's for any sickness, because if you want your immune system to be built, you, um, your defense mechanism within your body, you have to eat food and you have to eat healthy food. Uh, so that's why um, uh, the aspect of nutrition is quite important. And uh, when you are going to look at someone uh, and you are doing home-based care, um, and preferably for someone that's uh, uh, very in a very latent state or very uh, advanced state of the, the, the HIV in the person is better written, then it's very important that this person must have an intake of food. So food security, it's another, it's, it's, although it's a very broad aspect, it's, it's quite important, especially when it comes to health and, and, and HIV AIDS. And, and this is very much more important that uh, a patient or a client must have access to food, and it's very important. And, and not just access to any food, but any stable food. And uh, when you are dealing with somebody uh, that's living with the virus, is um, as you know, um, if the person is on ARV, uh, uh, the food intake uh, will increase, uh, and it's important. So it's also very important that you have to look also at other resources uh, for nutrition, um, and especially when it comes to sus the sustainability of that person. Um, so nutrition play a very critical ro role, especially when it comes to care and support uh, for people living with HIV AIDS. That's why it's very important that once you are caring for someone that's living with a virus, this person must have access to food. Uh, as you know, uh, as, uh, I assume you know that uh, once you're on treatment, is uh, your metabolism is quite faster and your and you, and, 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 and you always have, uh, you, because of the drugs, you need to have a more, more, more food and nutrition. So there are different uh, three levels of, of uh, food that you have to eat. And, and, and as you can see on your slide, uh, there are protein that you have to eat, uh, carbohydrate, uh, vitamins, and minerals. And the example of potrin, uh, potrin is, is you are looking at uh, different uh, uh, kinds of meat, um, white meat, uh, red meat, uh, and then you're also looking at calcium, for example, like milk yogurt, uh, cheese, and and also other uh, uh, food which is very much more important. So it's important that you need to have a combination of this food. 
And then the other thing that you have to look at, for example, is your vegetables, your fruits intake. Um, it's, and it's so important, uh, as you can look at the carbohydrate, is this uh, energy food or this uh, um, vegetables and fruit are giving you energy. And it's very important that you need to combine them with protein that you need to have in. The other thing is also vitamin. Um, uh, vitamin, vitamin supplements are very important. And, and some of the fruits are having very good vitamins, like oranges are having vitamin C. Um, you can look at, at carrots uh, that are having beta carotene um, and also vitamin A. Uh, papaya is very good, very rich in vitamin C and can also help especially against flu and, and cold. So it's important that when you have food that you need to have this different kind of intakes of food, a combination of this food, which are very important. And if you are going to look after someone um, and you are doing home-based care and this person uh, is, finds it very difficult to eat food, it's very important to make sure that the person does not just eat any food, but the person eat the right food. So it's important that you have to look at the person's nutrition. The other one is uh, you must also look at local food, staple food like cereals. Uh, here in Namibia, we've got the, the mahangu, we've got maize meal, uh, jungle oats, you've got beans, different kinds. So it's important that, uh, uh, especially looking in the light of that food have become very expensive and many people, they find it very difficult to buy food. Um, and sometimes when you are in a village uh, where you only have local produce food. So I will encourage that you also look at local produce food um, because uh, uh, your, your intake of vitamins and the supplements that your body needs, uh, it's quite rich when it comes to local food. So uh, I will really encourage you, if it's possible, that you, uh, uh, you have to eat uh, more healthier. And then having, going out and eating what we call junk food, um, pizzas, you know, uh, uh, food, we call it fast food uh, that are very oily and also unhealthy because the other thing is people think that the intake of food is just food but it's very important to know how you eat and also to look at uh, the, the, the danger of obesity uh, because many times uh, fast food or what we call junk food, uh, they are having toxins and also ingredients, fat that might uh, affect uh, your, your cholesterol and so on your high blood pressure. So it's very important that you need to look at uh, stable food, local food, uh, which is very important. And so for an HIV person, stable food plays a very important role. Then, of course, the other thing is uh, I want to talk on the aspect of uh, what happens when somebody is having poor nutrition. It means this person does not eat healthy. Uh, what are the consequences? What are the disadvantages when the person does not eat, eat healthy? Uh, of course, uh, if you look at those slides, uh, there is a diagram uh, that starts with pure, uh, poor, poor nutrition and it goes down to impaired immune system. What it actually means that if you don't have enough intake of food, especially when you're on ARV, um, uh, that you will experience weight loss. And of course, it will also affect your body, your muscles, and uh, you will feel weak. And, uh, and because of that, you will have a deficiency of, 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 of T cells within your body or, or, or antibody or immune system. Your immune system will become weak. So as you can see, the next slide is the impact immune system, which actually only means that if you don't have the right intake of food, uh, of course, then it means that your chances of, 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 of defaulting on your ARV uh, are, are quite big, and it's very important that you need to, to look at your nutrition. So if you have poor nutrition, it will lead, lead to a very weak uh, immune system, and, and for you uh, to, uh, to, for the a HIV virus to, to multiply, to mutate in your body, the chances are quite big, and, and you might have a situation uh, if you default on your ARV because of 
poor nutrition um, and then it means you have to go on a second regimen uh, which means that you are not guaranteed that you will uh, actually reverse the, 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 uh, the mutation of the virus. So the next thing is if, you, if your immune system is then uh, weak or impaired then the, the, uh, the, the, the level of vulnerability is quite high and, and, and then you will uh, uh, develop other AIDS related diseases um, where you will then uh, have uh, a syndrome that's where AIDS actually means it's an acquired immune deficiency syndrome and you will have other AIDS related disease uh, like TB uh, like diarrhea uh, you will have flu and, and this is actually the, the risk uh, because just because of a very poor nutrition or not eating well. And uh, so it's very important that you have to look at this uh, uh, food, uh, your nutrition, which is quite important uh, for yourself. So then if you look uh, at the other next slide, uh, you will see the whole cycle. What happens if you have a very good intake of food? And as I say again, it's clockwise when you have good and uh, a very balanced diet then the next thing is you will then uh, you will uh, get you will gain weight and then your immune system will be boosted you will have uh, the uh, sufficient or enough uh, vitamins and nutrients uh, and in your body so which will make your immune system much stronger and for the HIV to progress within your, uh, your body, or in your blood, uh, will be then less, and your chances of, 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 of suppressing the virus is quite big. And, and this is actually where you, nutrition plays a very uh, much important role. Also, just to summarize, um, uh, if you look, for an example, uh, uh, where somebody is living with a virus, is uh, the issue of energy. Now, if you are on ARV, and especially when you live with the virus, is your energy level, what you required, is it, it actually increased from 20 to 50%. So where somebody that's HIV negative, you, you actually only need less 20 plus or less than 20% of energy. But once you are living with a virus, is uh, you need more energy because you have a virus within your body that's fighting your immune system and that makes you very susceptible for other diseases. So your intake of energy is much more higher and, and, and more or less you need more than 50% of energy intake. And we which you need to, to use more than the normal person that's uh, not HIV positive. Uh, protein is another one. Um, so there's also increase where uh, somebody that's negative on, only need 10%, so your intake is more than 10%, 12 to 20% of energy intake that you need, uh, especially when you're living with a virus. The other th uh, aspect is micronutrients, uh, which are also very important. and it's very important that you need this micronutrients within you, um, which actually build also uh, your, your immune system. And the World Health Organization are having specific guidelines uh, that actually prescribe uh, service providers and, and, and also medical doctor, if you are on treatment, how many of the micronutrients you need. Uh, especially when you go first time for your HIV test and, and, and then they will look at the level of your CT4 count, they will look at the level of your viral load within your body and that will determine on what kind of ART uh, do you need and, and, and then so it's very important that you that uh, uh, the bottom line is nu nutrition nutrition of food plays a very important role especially when it comes to HIV AIDS and uh, someone that's living with a virus needs to to be very cautious on that uh, the other thing that uh, one has to look at is we assume that uh, you don't have a, a, a policy at your workplace or your company does not have a policy on HIV or the, the government does not have a policy. No, the government in Namibia we do have the national policy on HIV AIDS but this is now where we look from a, a company perspective when you're in a company or you're having an organization. So there are uh, four uh, areas that you have to look at uh, when you are going to compile a policy 
policy on HIV, specifically looking at nutrition. Number one is you, you, your policy needs to have a very clear statement uh, that articulates the principle of HIV vis-a-vis -vis also nutrition. And it needs to be a package. It needs to be part of the package when it comes to, to care and support. The second one is the whole uh, aspect of systems. Um, what, what are the roles of service providers? Uh, what is respected? What are the responsibilities? With which key, key stakeholders are you going to work when you are a company or an organization that's having a policy? The third aspect that you have to look at uh, when you have a policy on HIV nutrition is, of course, service delivery. Uh, are you going to provide the service or are you going to be a referral entity uh, and refer your clients or your employees to a service provider. Uh, the other one is with, uh, it's you have to look at the, the aspect of, of people living with HIV AIDS within your workplace. Uh, how are you going to deal with those people? Are you have, going to have caregivers or are you going to refer them to caregivers? So those are the components and the aspect which you have to look on. The other thing is palliative care, which is very important, and we are going to look at the definition of WHO. Now, the World Health Organization uh, define palliative care as a holistic approach, and it's looking at the improvement of quality of life, the life of the patient or the, uh, the client, and of course the patient with incurable disease like HIV AIDS, because currently we don't have a cure for HIV AIDS, and you are looking at uh, prevention and the relief of suffering, uh, and, and especially someone that's at the very advanced stage of, of, of the virus, the person is having a lot of symptoms, and these are the aspects. And then what WHO also defined is then it's looking at the early identification, uh, the assessment, and the treatment of pain and other problems, whether it's physical, psychosocial, and then spiritual. So what makes palliative care very important? Uh, it's very important in the sense that it gives a comprehensive package. It's, it's a package of care specifically for people living with HIV AIDS. Uh, the other importance is uh, palliative care relief the patient when it comes uh, to the symptoms, and especially when the person is at a very advanced stage. Um, and then, of course, uh, palliative care is also looking at other symptoms that people living with HIV experience, symptoms like pain, diarrhea, cough, uh, breath, nausea, weakness, fatigue, fever, and then sometimes, uh, sometimes also mental confusion. And of course, it's very important to know that who provides palliative care. Uh, palliative care is provided, of course, by health workers, and then very important, family. Family, family, family plays a very important role when it comes to the care of people living with HIV AIDS. And at the end, uh, the community needs to be involved because community plays a very important role. So the aspect of, of, of symptoms is very important. So when you are going to deal and you're going to care for someone that's HIV positive and, and, and you are going to look at this person, uh, it's very important to be familiar with some of the complications this person might experience and some of the symptoms. And you have to be in a position to help this person and also to identify the symptoms. Um, now, we are not saying that you need to be a medical doctor or a nurse, but when you are a trained community-based care, caregiver, is you are a, 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 a resource person, but at the end, you have to refer this person to professional help. So you are only there to identify certain symptoms. Now, if we look at the symptoms, these are only part of the symptoms that you can experience. And uh, the one is dia diarrhea, and then sometimes lack of appetite, nausea where the patient feels he wants to vomit, and then other uh, symptoms like sores uh, and, and, and ulcers, like on the mouth, and especially the person cannot eat. Uh, then also skin problems, uh, carposis sarcoma, uh, can also be another symptoms where the person is having very eczema and all these skin diseases, and, and the person might uh, uh, Create, uh, develop a skin irritation and which might be very allergic and very discomfort. 
cold cough, influenza, and fever. It might be that it's summertime and it's 35 degrees Celsius outside, and the person will have symptoms which you experience during winter. And in these are symptoms uh, that a patient can experience. Then dehydration, which means the person needs to have a lot of intake of fluid. Um, if a person who is on ARV does not drink a lot of water, the person dehydrates. So it's very important that your body needs a certain mass of water. So liquid is very important and the person needs to have a lot of intake of water. And then because the person is lying, lying in the bed and uh, you know, this patient can create bad sores. That's why it's very important to look at all the symptoms. And then the other is one psychological uh, 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 symptoms like anxiety. The person is very is fearful. There's a lot of depression. The person is, and and because of those psychological uh, symptoms, you know, the person can become psychotic and experience mental confusion, dementia. So it's very important that you have to look at this uh, at the symptoms. Now, when the person or your patient is on ARV, um, it's very important that the person needs to adhere to treatment. Um, uh, defaulting to treatment might mean that the person's case or situation might become quite worse. That's why in my previous slide I used the combination of nutrition, uh, which is one of the main one of the main reasons why people default default uh, from uh, ARV or from treatment is is because of, of nutrition. So it's adherence to treatment is very important. Now, when we say about adherence, it it only means that the patient is follow the instruction that's given by the medical or that's prescribed by the medical doctor or by the service provider, and 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 this, if the person is having both TB and HIV, then it's important. And if the, the person is on TB, that uh, he needs to be on DOT treatment, which is the direct observation treatment uh, for TB patients. So it's very important that you have to follow the prescription that's given. It's quite critical. Now, uh, if you become non-adherent, uh, you become very your, your infection will be much more longer, and of course, it will also prolong the treatment. So it it then puts you at risk when you at non-adherent or when you don't adhere to the treatment. What it actually says is you have to be obedient. You have to follow the instruction of the medical doctor or the nurse, whoever prescribes you your medical or your, your ARV. So when we look at ART, what are the, the reasons? Why do you need ART? Why do you need to be on treatment? On ARV, it's 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 very important. The first thing it it it, it looks at the uh, it's, it's a reduction of the multiplication of the AR HIV. So if you are not on treatment, uh, you the the HIV virus can produce up to 10 billion H, uh, HIV particles, uh, viral particles within your body. And, and which can become viral, uh, very, uh, uh, actually very dangerous for your body itself. So the, the, the virus is so vicious, it's, 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 it, it does not have any respect for your body. So the moment you are infected and your T cell is infected, it, it actually can produce up to 10 billion HIV particles within your T cells when you are not on AR. So what the ART does, it actually suppress the, the duplication of the virus and it will suppress the virus not to mutate and to replicate uh, within your body. And then the other thing is uh, why you need to be on ART, it then it restores your immunity or your immune body and it slows down the, the, the disease or the progression of the disease. It also then uh, increase your quality of life and um, in, and you can actually live longer than 30. I know people that are living more than 30 years, very healthy, uh, just because of ART and ARVs. And then, of course, um, uh, it also prevents you um, not to be, uh, to, to, in cases of ARV, uh, accidental uh, 
um, injuries that you can experience. And it also helps, especially for mothers that are pregnant, a mother-to-child transmission. And we are looking at the elimination of mother-to-child transmission. So when you're on ARV, you can be healthy, you can suppress the viral load, your CT4 count is high, you are healthy, and you are at the, uh, at the point or you have uh, the possibility to give birth to a healthy child. Uh, it's also very important to look at all of this, and this is what I've exposed. So the aspect of positive living, as I've said, is when you are HIV positive, does not mean that you have to be negative. And positive living means it's in your mind, your mindset. Because how you perceive yourself, and it's how you will actually live your life. So if, despite your condition, your status as being HIV positive, if you are positive in your mind and you believe that you will live longer, it is possible. So it's very important uh, that you need to look at your mindset. Uh, because your mindset uh, of positive mindset can actually make you prosperous and then you will have, it will influence your body and then also how you see life. So it's very important also, positive life means that you have to eat healthy, you have to think and, and when you are positive you need to set yourself goals You and you have to look at other ways of, of, of maximizing your knowledge. Start to read, uh, study, go read books. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, I mean, uh, enlarge your knowledge on the subject of HIV and, and of course become a champion, become a catalyst of change. Try to influence other people. Tell people about your status and make a difference in someone's life. By telling someone that you can live longer, uh, you can by trying to help someone else, you can actually also change your own life and this will also help you to plan for the future. So it's very important to know that also that orphans and vulnerable children plays a very important role and, and especially when it comes to uh, community home-based care because you're also dealing with children that are living. So children are having the right uh, to, 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 to everything as you can see, feminine life and especially when you're going to, to, to care for the community and you're a caregiver, you will deal with children whose parents died and who was themselves are HIV positive. So, and children, they do have the right to life and they have the right to protect it themselves. So it's very important to look at all this, this, this aspect, uh, which are quite uh, very much more important. So I'm going to look at uh, the community mobilization. So when you are going to work with uh, people living with HIV AIDS, and especially you are a community-based care uh, uh, giver, uh, you have to involve the community. And when we look at mob uh, community mobilization, uh, we, we are looking at how can we engage the rest of the community, like the gatekeepers, the leaders, and also those that, that are making a big difference in society. Let's look at the policy makers, the, the technocrats, other groups, other NGOs, the private sector. So it's very important that as a community home-based caregiver, you have to, to, to engage the community. And this is also where awareness come, comes in. You need to create awareness about HIV as a caregiver. You need to go out there and, 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 and mobilize, encourage community members to become involved, especially for people in their community that are infected and affected by HIV. So community mobilization is very important and you have, as a community home-based care, you are a facilitator. You have to facilitate this whole process to make sure that community are engaged actively and they are also part of the decision making uh, uh, in, in community home-based care. So it's very important that you have to take the community through this, you have to prepare them as I say, create awareness. Community must be in a in position to identify when there is problems, uh, if there are information that they need. And of course, a relationship is very important. If you as a caregiver, you go within the community, you have to make sure that you are building those. So there, there are different steps that you can follow also when you go 
need to mobilize community is you have to plan um, it, uh, then you have to go enter within the communication, go engage, and then conduct a session where you talk to the community, what are the problems, what are the challenges, how are there any people living with HIV AIDS, and, and this is where you can look at, and once you have, you went through those stages and you conduct those sessions, then you come up with action plans, and while you are implementing the action plan, you can actually mobilize and then also monitor the action plan within the community. So thank you very much uh, for listening to me. I will then encourage you that you refer to your manual, your study manual, your study guide uh, for more information. And I hope uh, that you will prepare for the assignments and then also for the exam.